Hello, comrades, and welcome to episode 216 of the Terminus Podcast for the weeks of September 23rd, 2023. I'm your host, Ellis, otherwise known as the Admiral. With me, I have, well, four co-hosts, really, because TJ snuck in. Uh, Nicholas Christensen, Dean Massara, Tyler oh. L., and uh, TJ, because he was so bored, he decided to guess his way into the podcast as a guest. Hell yeah, COVID will do that, baby. <laughs> yeah, TJ. It's not real, but also I have it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yep. And uh, I hope everyone that's uh, listening to this podcast is masked up, uh, because, you know, you don't want to get sick from TJ. If um, you're listening, I already gave it to you. Oh, that's true. Also, this like if you're watching this on like a 5G connection, that also probably did it. Yeah, just yeah. saying. Anyway, uh, the train will terminate at this station. I'm not here at 6G. You know, at least my MBTA <laughs> stop wasn't built on a super fun site. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> there are more than I thought there were that are built on super yeah. fun sites. <laughs> Two more than I thought there were. Does anyone want to introduce where we are, even though it says it three times on this camera? We're in the middle of nowhere. That's are we on the Flagstaff cam or the no. Gallup cam? Or the Gallup cam. I guess okay, I just yeah. said it. We're on the Gallup cam. We're in Gallup, New Mexico, because yeah. Ojilis recommended this, but he couldn't be here. I'm sorry, he couldn't be with us. Um, yeah. He uh, forever in his memory. Yeah, yeah. he's out rail fanning. Um, Maybe he'll be on this cam. Oh no, this uh, no, is this Mexico. is wrong. No, this isn't. He wanted Tyler wanted Mexico. to put on the Flagstaff camera. Then we might have seen Ojilis. You never know. Yeah. Well, I'll keep an eye. If I see an Ojilis on the Flagstaff cam, I'll tell you to switch over. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we'll do that. Um, <gasps> anyway, we had uh, three incidents, or sorry, four incidents for their class one April responsibility Ooh. across three different railroads, uh, starting with Union Pacific on September 14th. This is the big one, actually. There was a large fire and explosion um, <laughs> and uh, at Bailey Yard, I believe. And, yeah. But don't yep. worry, Trainsmag has... Uh, stated that the Bailey Yard explosion, quote, appears to be accidental, which I sure hope so, right? I sure hope so. You mean appears to be? Yeah, I mean, it appears to be. It says, right now, it doesn't look like an act of domestic terrorism committed by somebody taking pictures, as we discussed earlier. Um, But why wasn't this statement made after East Palestine? (laughs) That's a good question. (laughs) UPS PR, what can I say? (laughs) <laughs> Have we ever confirmed if you if uh, East Palestine was accidental? Who knows? Yeah, it was. It was big UP. It was, it was the yeah. UP deep state. Well, the UP state. if if the U, if UP and NS were in a feud such that they're blowing up each other's trains, it really sort of undercuts the uh, the um, intermodal thing that we're going to talk about later. Although I guess they aren't technically working together; they're just both working against. CPKC. Honestly, if yeah. railroads were competitive to the point of domestic terrorism, I would say railroads are so back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> like we're like, like they're back, baby. Days. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> uh, time to time to set up cannons in a canyon for. No yeah. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna watch uh, total war on wars again on uh, Cajon Pass. <laughs> Those, Tennessee Pass. <laughs> those uh, those Minuteman missile cars, they're coming out of retirement. Yeah. Or like the Lionel ones. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Anyway. Frog Wars Episode 3. So I don't know if anybody died uh, because of this large explosion. No, you, no Union Pacific personnel were injured. Uh, and, of course, it was in Bailey Yard, so it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah. Although, I mean, it's not in the middle of nowhere. It is in a town, but they managed to evacuate everybody, so it's not like there was a massive explosion in a populated area. Um, yeah. And it's still, compared to East Palestine, pretty pretty low-key. Um, 
a CSX Carmen was killed in an accident near Toledo, which is kind of the unfortunate one. Fred Anderson, 56, worked for there for 19 years. Um, this is a third. This is the third fatal accident in a CSX uh, yard since June, and there have actually been some follow-ons from this. I don't remember exactly what. I know there was a PSA, which obviously doesn't really change anything, but some sort of uh, some sort of thing that went out. I can't remember. It's it's listed somewhere in all these articles, but I don't remember what it was. Point is, there have there have been some repercussions from all these accidents. Um, uh, yeah, I hope so. Uh, I mean, in a sane world, there should be, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the following day, BNSF uh, decided to be uh, very insensitive and uh, wear blackface. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they I told you to describe it. Yeah, BNSF uh, in, hit a vehicle of some description. It doesn't say what kind of vehicle. Um, it's like a buggy. Yeah, people are speculating it was like an ATV. It's not not big. It just The whole front of the locomotive is black now. Yeah. Um, and the, presumably what is left there is a small portion of the original vehicle. I don't I don't know. It's yeah, it Wait, looks you got a like problem a, with the locomotive being black? Like a Polaris or something. Uh, like a little Someone's new. Someone's not gonna. Uh, someone's gonna have. Hope they bought the gap insurance on their side by side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they could pay it all. It gets paid off by the insurance money. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course it was in. Oh no, I was looking at the wrong one. Road was, was closed for construction. Signage was in the area identifying driver, notifying drivers of the closure. Um, it it got high centered. Okay, they high centered the side by side, and and so presumably the person did not get killed by the train when it hit there small vehicle, and then it exploded. Oof. At least you know the roll cage is solid. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, speaking of solid, uh, <laughs> the second, or sorry, the final incident, second one for CSX, happened on the 21st, which was uh, CSX train hit a cement truck. Yeah, uh, this is my, my, favorite, this my favorite one of the week. It's It's got white face. It's all over the place. Yeah. It's uh, the new gray ghost. Diesel fuel and drywall <laughs> dust can be seen along the tracks. So, um, We're getting more heritage units. <laughs> yeah, we have the the black base unit and the white base unit. Thanks, guys. God. <laughs> These are the kind of heritage unit. units that we deserve. The yin and yang <laughs> of railroading right here. They're Something very like heritable. That. Oh, hey, I wore bonnet on that train. Um, oh, my my thing is not live. All right, so those are the 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 crashes, the wrecks, the incidents for the mantle. Uh, both CPKC and CN haven't had one since August, but NS is still the current holder. Um, I, I mean, I wish if we had cooler photos of the Bailey Yard explosion, I would probably vote for that one. But I'm not sure. I don't think I can vote for that one just because it let off a bunch of like heavy smoke. Yeah. I feel like it didn't follow the first rule of explosions, which is cool guys don't look at explosions. Well, no, I feel like yeah. it did follow the first rule because we don't have any damn photos. Yeah. Cool I, I will be uncool. I want to look at the explosion. Yeah, What? where's the nerd footage, okay? Yeah. Yeah. But the Super 8. Why, what are you guys... Are you guys voting for something else? I'm voting for the concrete truck. The concrete truck yeah, is concrete pretty truck. rough, yeah. Concrete. You know, I... Big concrete. Yeah, okay, you guys are all going to vote for concrete. Okay, I'm going to vote for the BNSF one. Because it just looks so stupid. It looks like a Looney Tunes. Like, <laughs> hit the thing yeah. and just poof. You know? Uh, I, I, mean, I mean, probably. That's what happened. BNSF, uh, what what number of locomotive is this? BNSF, uh, I think that's 8726, stuck its finger in the barrel of the rifle <laughs> when Elmer Fudd was God. shooting at him. Uh, oh, apparently, uh, according to the according to reporting by KTVO, the railroad was closed for constructions, and signage was in the area notifying drivers of the closure. Driver of the side by side reportedly identified as blah 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 blah, drove around the barricade <laughs> and a closed road a road close sign. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying uh, he didn't have it coming. I did mention some of that, but the, the guy definitely had it coming. 
Yeah. Oh, you know why it became uh, the blackface unit? Why? Uh, because the gas tank exploded. Well, yeah. Side yeah. Side. I could I could assume that based on the fact that it's just a friggin' like pile. Yeah. According to user sixty six sixty on Reddit, twenty minutes from where I live, I know the guy personally. Damn, I dead? feel sorry for that that guy. No, he's not dead. Well, he didn't say new. He said no. Yeah. So I'm assuming he's still alive. <laughs> new past tense. Damn, <laughs> that would have been a Where's way to find the out. Engine on this thing. Did like the whole block melt? It's gone. It's just I mean, it, it evaporated. Gas, gas tank blew up. I mean, I I'm pretty sure everything is just went with it. You know, jet fuel can melt side by sides. <laughs> um. All right, so then we're giving it to the CSX hitting the concrete truck, I guess. Yeah, we're giving it to big concrete, yeah. Yeah, that's so fair. That's a big concrete. All right, big um, concrete. we have some, like, generic article stuff, stuff that was near us. I mean, TJ, you had a thing happen to you. Uh, I had a couple of things I wanted to talk about, but some people actually, like, left their homes and did things. For example, me. Tyler, you went to see... Um, well, I guess I can't call this my nemesis, but I do still have a grudge. I went to see the very old thing. <laughs> it's not that old. So, uh, it is now 101 months old. Wow. 101 is... months is not that old. <laughs> no, yeah. 100 years, one month. <laughs> oh <my God>. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. I got to see. So, I got to see. Uh, I got to see Grandpa at the uh, CRM. That's that's old. I gotta see 191. I love 191. Yeah. Hey, I Did mean, you, uh... you didn't see the the cardboard 191. The what? The, there, the... there was a cardboard one. Oh no. Yeah, at the well, convention. In two weeks, you're gonna see a very old thing as well. That's true. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Anyway, okay, yeah, this so... is a really nice shot because there's nothing to get in your way because it's the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So the. The shenaniganry was Ojilis tends to call upon me to go and visit him at times. Yeah. And finally, there was a time that worked. And which was last weekend. And so, get up there and we check the schedules and oh my god, they're running the steam train for the anniversary of the Grand Canyon Railway. Nice. Just last month, they run another special for uh, for an N60 turning 100 uh, but yeah. I like was starting college that weekend so yeah no but anyhow so myself one of my buddies Vinny and Ojilis ended up going out to chase this thing we couldn't make the morning run up to the canyon but we got up to um, the South Rim, Grand Canyon, uh, what is that? It's Grand Canyon Village, where the station is, the Y, all of that. The good side had, of the like, Grand Canyon. <laughs> yeah. We had a little over an hour to spare. Um, and we're thinking, okay, they're, they're going to take a while to move the engine around and all this stuff. So we start to head out to go see the actual canyon itself. And immediately they signal to reverse the engine down the Y. Nice. Um, huh? So we got like, a couple of good shots of it there. And, you know, let's see the canyon for a bit. Set up at the first location, which is that <laughs> bird photo, about half a mile down. Third photo. And let, me, let me grab the third photo. Hey, I've eaten dinner in the middle of that Y. Or I've eaten lunch in the middle of that Y. <laughs> yeah, there are. There are restaurants there. Yeah, the I, hotel I the the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. I have not spent a lot of time up in Grand Canyon Village. Well, frankly, even though I live here, I haven't gone. I've yeah, only the, gone up there twice. The one time I've been there, I stayed at that hotel that's like right next to the Y. Mm -hmm. And I had like a couple meals next to the Y. It was cool. I always got uh, always got to see the F40s and stuff. But yeah, I digress. The F40s were uh, were being very noisy today. <laughs> well, the single one. How did they smell? They doing the late. Frankly, the engine did not smell great until like the very end. Damn. <laughs> um, but what was hilarious is at the at the canyon, right? 
the last three cars of the train are split from the rest of it so that you can actually walk to the other side of the consist. It's just got this extendo air hose. So we set up and we're waiting, we're waiting to hear, because you can hear it around the bend. And so we signal, they signal the reverse, and then we just hear this almighty wheel slip. Oh no! And I wish I had the video, but Nick's got it. Um, Everyone add Ojilis a million times for the video. Yeah. I just I just had a moment of, who's Nick? Yeah, I know, it takes me a second every time someone does that. Yeah. So, we... we Got our shots there. Uh, there was some elk as well. That was right over there for time. Neat. Ran down like 20-something miles to the second location, which is that second photo. Got shots there, which is like five minutes on a dirt road. Middle of nowhere, except for the stock pens. Yeah. Which is really neat. Um, and then third location, SP Road. That was my favorite shot, the first one there. Yep. That's and then... That is a great shot. We ran for water and caught the train just before it got in because they were doing like single direction on some of the roads for a while. Hmm. And we also, if you look at that photo of the converted RCC that hasn't been converted much. Oh yeah, I was about <laughs> to ask what that was about because I was just looking at yeah. the... <laughs> we, we noticed it and we're just like, wait a minute. Like what? Like, you took out the engine and, like, the radiators, that's kind of it. Yeah, it still has the antennas. Um, the antennas, that's awesome. I, would, I would assume the traction motors, the control uh, stands. RDCs don't motors. have traction motors. Oh, wait, oh, wait, they were mechanical? Yeah. No. They're diesel, they're diesel oh. mechanical. Oh, we're dead. <laughs> what? They have, they have okay. two six-cylinder engines and two torque converters that just point at the inside axles. So they're the trucks on an RDC are technically A1 trucks and not uh, O trucks. Um, and if we're going to uh, go in this rabbit hole anymore, I need to explain to you that the the Roger Williams train mm -hmm. set, uh, when it was running on third rail power, used the other axles, as in the outer ones. So it, oh, was, yeah. it was 1A, A1, on diesel power, and then A one one A on electric power, um, which is so it, dumb. It's so cursed. But retract yeah. all of my statements of like the previous podcast, where I was advocating for that thing to run. No, no, it should run. It's good. I think it's the bursar should put in a third rail and run it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well I, think, I think they should cut it up. It's so stupid. No. No, yeah. Yes. Based. No. We don't have it. Look, it's the state of Rhode Island has like layout. nothing. Yeah, we have right. nothing. We have Everett Eleven, which Pennsylvania will not give us back. You have Daniel Nason. No, we which, don't. I mean, yeah, but it's all the way over there. We're always gonna give you back. Be also, we, don't need that. we don't need that one back. No, we do. <laughs> Restore it and run it on the Newport dinner train. Um, I, I, I see a Zappy boy, Dean. We do have the Night Owl back. I want to talk about Dean Zappy Boy in a second because it's cute, but we do have the Night Owl back, and they're adding apparent. Yeah. I mean, they aren't really adding more Night Owl departures, but they are making them much cheaper because the Night Owl is much longer now because it has like a hour layover in New York City. So I was throwing around ideas of going to like Baltimore or something because Gloria likes the Ravens, and I've never been to the B and O Museum. Um, just a... All right, then you can see the insane locomotive. You're gonna have to be way more specific than that. <laughs> no, the one that was actually for an insane asylum. Oh, oh! Wait, which one what? is that? The tank <laughs> engine. Or one yeah, it was just a hospital. It. It, it a had hospital, a insane moment. asylum. <laughs> the terms yeah. back then are very loose. That's fair. Anyway, uh, speaking of people who are insane, Dean, uh, what are these pictures? Uh, well, I actually got off of my um, my um, my um, uh, lazy rear and went downtown uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, and, and I was just sort of dr driving around and uh, was driving on the Main Street trolley and saw 
539, which is originally from New Zealand. I think the city acquired in 1994. I, yeah. Uh, and we've got a few of those and some from a, uh, Portugal, which are like little four axle things. Yeah. Cute. They're dinky. They are dinky and, and they're yeah, and, very fun to run on left track. <laughs> yeah, and I almost had a heat stroke in in one of the Porta ones when uh in like two thousand four. So that was fun. Oh. Nice. Because because the freaking because the freaking uh uh motor went on lunch for like two hours. Damn. <laughs> that oh, that's no. rough. Union break. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm out. <laughs> I'm <break>. out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm out. Dies. <laughs> But yeah, y'all are on your I, own. I went... Here's yeah. the instruction manual. <laughs> get, get some wind in here. Uh, yeah, I uh, went to a world famous Kentucky Street, which was, which had nothing going on. Like there was like one train, and that was it. And so last really week, sorry, I said, is it really yeah. world famous then? I mean, yeah, like, like. Normally it's um a uh, pretty busy. It's it's just, it's just been a uh, slow the uh last times that I'm um, I've been going. I haven't heard of it. Yeah, what sure you yeah. <laughs> sure you have it. When you say famous Kentucky blank, I I think fried chicken. Just saying. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm hungry, as already established. Yeah. Well, <laughs> eat. Yeah, when when I went no. to uh, go eat last week, <laughs> speaking of, uh, I. I, I like one of the places that I'm a regular at has me cross over the um, the uh, NS main line. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know what stuff that is. I think it's just another sub. Point being, uh, there was a train stop there, and it was and it, and it blocked three crossings. So I had to go all the way around that that down this like little like like back road. Hook at you, and then go back out to lunch. And and it was still there when 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 I left like an hour later. So yeah, I don't guy, know uh, what happened. The guy was like, uh, "Sorry, I'm out. Here's the instruction manual." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like that guy. In, guy. Uh, it's like that guy who makes the daily YouTube videos complaining about UP blocking the crossing next to his house. Yeah, that guy. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I was. I think that's another level. I know I called uh, Dean insane, but that was tongue in cheek. This guy, on the other hand, let's not. No, I know it. just. Just for like half an hour, Dean became that guy. <laughs> Just like take out my phone, vertical mode. So here's a Union Pacific. Yeah. <laughs> Pointing oh. at a BNSF engine and saying that. Yeah, uh, exactly. Union Pacific doesn't get through here very. <laughs> oh, I forgot to put in oh. your link about the uh, the 4960 Centennial. Anyway, we did amazingly. That was two people that left the house. Um, Milky, you didn't happen to go anywhere, did you? Uh, I went to have? the museum to uh, prepare for our Halloween event that we're having nice. during weekends here in October. Spooky, scary, spooky, it's, scary. Uh, it, it's actually not scary. Um, oh. It's a family-friendly Halloween event. With blood. So, well, that's, yeah, someone and, will die. Have uh, fun. Have fun, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I die of fun when we get the sweeper done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Which I don't have an update on. Uh, Damn. Yeah, this. <gasps> yeah, it should be, shouldn't be a good time this year. So I'll be up there occasionally, operating, uh, probably. So. Nice. Should be good. Yeah. Uh, another update near me. Uh, Something that I hold new and dear to my heart, the B and W Classic S P power. Uh all of them got sold the bug X. And fifteen oh one skipped town yesterday. So Sad. they're going to somewhere in the Midwest and then I don't know what they're gonna do from there. I hope they survive. I hope they survive too. Um I gotta say, it's the same that the group that got together two years ago to do this didn't happen. Mm-hmm. 
We, I feel like we could use an hardware room museum out here. That is an orf. <laughs> no, just yeah. looks like a looks like a proper museum. Start next door. Start orf two. Orf yeah, two. Yeah, orf. Yeah. Call it wharf. More diesels on the forehead. Yeah, this Trains Magazine article just goes into the history of the Freeler still in SP paint. <laughs> Which are cool. Which are cool. Uh, 1501, of course, being probably the wearer of the four. And like the famous the, one. And the famous one, yeah. And the one that I have the most connection to because I always watched it when I went to high school. <laughs> Because I grew up about a mile from the yard. Like, it's rich. remember writing about it in the... Shit, yeah. what was that? Blockade Runner stories. Anyway. Yeah. Um... And... Well, I tried... I... Oh, oh, sorry. I tried to segue too early. I forgot you had one more. Yeah, you still got one of the chamber. Gotta be careful. I know. It's so good, TJ. I hate trains anyway. Ain't we all? Oh, okay. So should I just go now? Yeah. Okay, I get it. Okay. Well, trains hate me. Uh, well, the MBTA hates me, to be more specific. So, uh, Everybody I have me. started a new job in Boston, the city of racists. <laughs> and, uh... My job is not being racist. My job is uh, doing video editing at a university in Boston. And involved in that is a like hour and a half commute both ways on everyone's favorite commuter rail. A pill in the snow. Uh, so far, it has been quite the time. In my first week, on my last day of my first week, there was a freak, like, microburst storm that t put down, like, six trees uh, right before the commute home. Oh, yeah. You got real screwed. Yeah, and so my train, along with, like, <laughs> like five or six other ones in both directions, uh, got trapped, basically, on the Fitchburg line. And I ended up having to take uh, one commuter rail train. We sat and sat and sat, got passed by a few trains. And then we get like three stops down the line from where I get on. Pass, They're like, all right. Passes and the trains going in the opposite direction. Yeah, away yeah, from the, the incoming. Washout. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the incoming trains. Yeah. So, well, this is before the washout. This is just from the trees. This is like a week before that. Oh, geez. So, right. I don't. I, yeah, this is. <laughs> Podcast and now, and then things uh, got worse. <laughs> yeah, so that uh, so they they deboarded us, and we got on the following unit train, which had my boss on it. So I got to small talk with my boss for an hour and a half, and then they were like, "Actually, yeah, we're just gonna terminate service at South Acton." Mm -hmm. uh, so good luck. And I asked a conductor, I was like, "So they're just ending the train? Like, how do I get home?" And they're like, "Oh, they can't just leave you there." Like, we've got to have buses or something. They can't just leave you there. And I was like, okay, cool. And I sat back down. And then 10 minutes, they come over the PA, and they're like, we will not have any alternate transportation at South Carolina. Oh, <laughs> <bruh>. <laughs> Yeah, there so, will be. Yeah, there will be buses. Nope. Yeah, no. So my, uh, my absolute gem of a partner drove from Worcester to South Acton, like 45 minutes, to pick me up. And since the following, tr since I ended up on the following unit from mine with my boss, we ended up giving my boss a ride home. <laughs> so my girlfriend and I had to sit and make small talk with my boss <laughs> <laughs> that I had only known for like three days. Oh no! <laughs> it was like one of the most awkward car car rides of my life. But little did I know, my commute would get worse. <laughs> so I I go in. Monday, the next week, everything's fine. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I work out my second job, so I still worked from home. Friday, I go into the office, everything's fine. 
supposed to rain later in the day. I don't really think much of it. Um, I drive my car to the station instead of walking. That was like the only thing I did to prepare myself. Friday night or evening, I take the train home. It starts raining, and I'm like, oh, great. I'm glad I drove. It was downpouring at that point. And all of a sudden, my phone started blowing up with flash flood warnings. Love that. <laughs> And I was like, oh, great, I have to drive home in this, and I have to drive uphill to Both get ways. home. Both ways, yeah. yeah. Um, which, like, good, I live at the top of a hill, bad driving up current of water from, <laughs> you know, a hill. Uh, little did I know that my train was the last one to make it past North Lemonster <laughs> due to a washout that... Uh, took all the ballast away from the train tracks. Oh, it was no more than that. Ballast. It was a lot. It was like the whole embankment was gone. Let me see if I... Yeah. I just uh, well, threw the, the article in. I'm going to see if I can pull up the picture. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was wild. Apparently, so I, I learned this on, on this this Friday. Or no, uh, my days are a lot of whack because I have COVID. Wednesday, when I left early, I was on the train with... No, Tuesday, I was sorry. I was on the train with a bunch of people who one of them were on the train where the washout when the washout happened. Ugh. And so they pulled up to North Lemonster, which is like feet, literally feet from the washout, like the train station North Lemonster, and then like feet north or feet west of that there was a washout. And, and no so, no small washout either. No, like a train car length washout probably. Yeah. And they were telling us that the con the crew just like slowed the train down really carefully. They were like, "Yeah, we're gonna go really slow into the station because if the it looks like there's some sort of mudslide or washout or something in front of us, but we have to get you off the train." <laughs> <laughs> and so this lady told me that she she ended up having no, literally, she had to drive through like waist high water to get oh. home. Like literally, oh. that was the only way she could get home. Uh, and it was because water that had washed out that the railroad track was gushing down the road that is beneath the railroad track. Oh, my God. And it was literally like a disaster movie. And uh, so for the last week and a half, I've had to take a bus. Well, no, like last week. I've had to take a bus. Yeah, and then you got COVID. <laughs> and then I got COVID, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's fixed. They fixed it. The day I got COVID, they fixed it. Um. And it looks like a pile of dirt, but I'm hoping there's something more substantial under there, you know, to prevent <laughs> another one. It's a it's um, an engineered pile of dirt. Um, yeah, that, I was hoping that that's what it was. Yeah, but anyway, um, uh, at least uh, the MPDA just got like this big grant for upgrading track, not in your neck of the woods necessarily, but they did get a bunch of money, which right. is nice. Yeah, well, well, was that the MPTA or was that just the state in general? Well, it's like who was it for? The other now. Well, because I thought I, I didn't read the art, I didn't end up reading the article, but they're they got you're talking about the Springfield, the Worcester level yeah, stuff, right? I can't read the article, unfortunately, but oh yeah, yeah that's right, that's they, why I they didn't got a hundred million dollars for track improvements between Springfield and Worcester, so you know it's something, okay. it's good. Uh, um, yeah. Also, Conway Scenic got just random receptions, uh, things people have received under that umbrella. They got a bunch of hoppers, and I'm not sure where they came from. I think they were just hanging out in East Deerfield, because that's sort of what the article alludes to, or the post alludes to. Interesting. The, the 470 Club and Conway Scenic, which notably the 470 Club is not the New England Steam Corp that actually has 470, uh, oh. received uh, half a dozen main central ballast cars and a B&M flat car, which oh, cool. got taken over through the interchange... At, uh, at Hazen's and on to Conway Scenic. I, again, I think they were just hanging out in uh, East Deerfield. But that's my Conway Scenic news. Gotta right. get up there again. Milky, you had one more yeah. thing and then we've gotta move on. Yeah, um, the story of Railroad Preservation Association had their open house last weekend where they sold off the 21. I still don't know where the hell they're gonna run it but it will be entertaining. What is the 21? Out. Oh, it's a, a logging mic? Yeah, it's a 90 ton. Baldwin okay. logging Mercado. Mm -hmm. And it's been under restoration for about 
30 years. Oh, cool. Don't like that. 37, 13 vibes. Um, so I can't help but notice that the cab is taller than the building. Like the doorway. Yeah. And if you notice, in the background of the first picture, the tender is actually on the track in the background. So somehow... Oh, across the street. Yeah. Hmm. So somehow, when they get the engine done, they're going to have to move it. Oh, I just scrolled <laughs> over. To, now I can see the tender. There, there, there's a logistical issue. There's a few logistics issues. I'm sure it is fine. Uh, yes. Yeah. This will be fine. And then they're going to be storing one on the brand sign for however far they can. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, You know what? I wish them luck. I do, too. I'm hopeful that they can do what they set out to do 30 years ago. Uh, yeah. I admire the dedication. Yeah. Well, you know, when you restore something done. for 30 years... Yeah. Uh, you, you you really, I'm sure you build up a lot of hope around it, and then uh, of course Steamtown will just put pull the rug out from under you. Yeah. yeah. Again, I, I we talked about it last time. I think it's a good thing overall. But anyway, oh, yeah. uh, it's time for uh, locomotive versus. Uh, Nobody oh. gonna do it. Somebody should do it. Do the thing. Okay. Locomotive versus. There we go. That was pretty good. That was yeah. pretty good. Um, all right, uh, TJ, do you want to intro this one? Because you're the one who suggested it like several months ago. Yeah, so uh, that was this summer. We saw that thing, right? Like it beginning of the summer? Yeah, I think it was yeah, like so, in April or something. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So earlier this year, Ellis, uh, Mew, and I went to the Connecticut antique machinery association steam up mm -hmm. and we got the chance to see uh luck very luckily we got the chance to see hawaii number five uh wow. a little 242 steamed up running back and forth on this little stretch of track and while i was there i was thinking this thing does not look much bigger than a 24440 or whatever mm -hmm. the and especially the bnsr ones because they were big yeah, notably, this thing is three foot, and the BNSR yes. is, of course, oh, yes, two yes. foot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's important to note. Um, so, here we are. Uh, Hawaii 5 versus BNSR 8. Let's Ooh. see how... I personally think it'll be relatively close, but I yeah. don't know. I'm not good I... at locomotive versus half the time, so... <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> so feel you there. Well, here's a crunchy photo of BNSR 8 that I think is a good one for us to use. Uh, let me just grab a picture. Or grab, grab the link for everybody. And I'll go and find a nice picture of uh, of Cama number five. <laughs> oh, I have found right. termination. <laughs> oh, you do have a good one? Yeah, I have a good one. Okay, drop that in the chat then, please. Which Do you want to represent anyone? I'll represent the number eight. Okay. Okay. Um, I think the five is a cute engine, and I found it through a... I first found out about it through a narrow gauge discussion forum post where it's <laughs> on the tax. I'm like, huh, this oh, is yeah. really interesting. Yeah, it's a like, cute thing. When it was at Kumbres and Toltec. Yeah, yeah, yeah it it's had quite a, a history. Time. Yeah. It, 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 it's done some journeying. And weirdly, it's in Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah, there's, a, there's an art photo of the five. Hey, at least it ain't in New Jersey. Yeah, Ellis, Gloria. Wait. Cool, yeah, Ellis, Gloria, Mew, Lafayette, and I did that. Yes, we got to ride on the back. This was most 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 importantly Lafayette. Yeah, it was his first yeah. train ride. Yeah, it's an oil fired locomotive, so the tender is safe yeah. to sit on. Yeah. Okay. Well, and they don't have any yeah. other equipment really. They have yeah. like yeah. they have another locomotive which doesn't do anything, and they also have two Rio Grande gondolas. Yeah, well, they yeah. also have like a couple, a couple like come alongs. Oh yeah, basically yeah, yeah. that have seats on them for the port for the uh, they have like a what's that thing called like a Plymouth diesel. Oh yeah, that's right. They do have that. Oh right, yeah they yeah it's like a friggin' it's like when you see the, the speeder with the speeder trailers that are just oh god big links. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right, Why? I'm ready to go. All right, you ready to go? Oh. All right, let me get um, this. let me get this. Oh. 
Let me get this. Loki, are you, do you want to do the, the Hawaii? I I kind of want to do the Hawaii. I think it'd be fun. It'd be I really cute. Uh, I, speaking I, of Locomotive I, Versus, I'm just going to say this now before I forget to say it at the end of the show. We have new trading cards on sale on the website. And also we have a Locodome bracket coming up, which I know Tyler's very excited about. Um, <laughs> that we will be opening up uh, submission for rosters after the upcoming screenshot competition. Um, the It's five locomotives, a maximum of 200,000 pounds of tractive effort total. So, I think. Anyway, uh, I'm going to... What do I give it to? I don't know who to give the first... To give the ball to here. Do either of you guys have an opinion? I don't really mind either. No, way. not you. You're you're playing. Not you and Milky. The other two people. <laughs> you go either way, honestly. All right, eight. All right, yeah. Let's give yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Give it to two foot. Yeah, it's, it's what the people ball. want. Yeah. Suppose. Right, let's go. Uh, I just want five in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Total engine and tender weight. Okay. That's total probably a good engine place to start. and tender weight. Yeah, no, that's a. That's a fun place to start. 61,800. Oh, are you kidding? Ooh. 66,500. I went with the total one Ooh. because I thought it would be... Uh, I'm going to be honest. I don't even know if the one on this page is accurate to 8 or 7. It says 7 and 8. Uh, well, yeah, I know that, but well, 7 and 8 are not the same different. weight. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they're a little so, different. <laughs> I think 8 is even that heavier I, than that. Man... I my gut I was like wait I thought eight was different than seven and then in my head I was like no I'm wrong. No they, they, so, they definitely are they, they just made it thicker I don't know. <laughs> um anyway all right Milky you won that I guess one. I have to buy a BNSR book and figure out the actual find the actual builder's photo and get all the details. Oh uh, I'm sure we'll have to do that can... eventually when we make a two foot gauge uh, batch of trading yeah. cards. <sighs> Well, the good thing about the two foot gauge batch is that we can use all photos we take in one sitting. <laughs> That's right. We need to find Future. 16 different... Well, if we did a museum batch, it'd be easy, just five of them, but finding 16 yeah. different two foot gauge engines would be an adventure. I mean, uh, if you use one... Of roster. Yeah. yeah. That, that'd do. Alright, Bilky, your move. Okay, you're built. Uh... I know you're going to win this one. 1913. 1925. Yeah. It's not even that young. Although I did say that that uh, the 1923 engine that we discussed earlier was not even that old, so don't, don't listen yes. to me. Uh, <laughs> Milky, you're up again. Hmm. What's your... Triber diameter. Ooh. Ooh, that's a risky one. That's a good one. <sighs> but I have a sense of scale because I've stood next to this. <laughs> hey, I've stood next to both. Uh, driver <laughs> diameter 35. 36. Bruh. <laughs> <Holy>. Awesome. <laughs> I that's knew they incredible. Look so <laughs> Way to be those guys. <laughs> oh my. Also, I sent, a, I sent a video of the five pulling the RG. Uh, Rio Grande hoppers and wheel slipping. I d as a bonus. <laughs> I, I don't know that's where to show that, but yeah, that's a vibe. <laughs> that's a smile point. It's, no, it's not. not. What's your engine weight? Uh, engine weight. I know you're going to win this one. 66,500. <laughs> 37,300. It's uh, like half the weight. It's insane. Well, I mean, the tender is also the engine. On mine. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it's a <laughs> three-foot gauge. Yeah. Okay, what's your water capacity? Oh, God. Uh, 800. Uh, 900. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, Again, I waited to be those guys. This, These shouldn't be, be those evenly guys matched. <laughs> I told you. I told you. I know you said I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> this is, like, the best, like, meta... Like meme versus. What is your engine wheel base? Uh, I don't know if you want to ask that. Yeah, this is this mm -hmm. is engine wheel base. Where is it? Twenty six. 
Dean, are you sure about that one? Oh, no. it's gonna be like twenty five. Fifteen point seventeen. What? Fifteen? Because he's a two four <laughs> two against a forty. Oh yeah. But still, Ugh. god damn. Well, like against a Boston, real, I guess not overall. Yeah. To Boston, yeah. The Boston boy. What's Thank your minimum weight of whale? Bruh. <laughs> Thirty-two. Twenty. <laughs> that that's that's insane. What? That's insane. You could be run over by this locomotive and be fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is the safest locomotive. <laughs> this is uh, not legitimate advice. No one <laughs> Get run over by a train. Please don't. It's fun. What do you say, Milky? Cylinders. Uh, cylinders? Like soup. High, High pressure, pressure cylinders? Oh, okay, yeah. okay. 12 by 16. Oof. 10 Ooh. by 14. Hell yeah. No. Okay. Oh my god. It's well, not just that the two foot engine has bigger cylinders, it has much bigger cylinders. Yeah. That's hilarious. Uh, let's go attractive effort. Trafford effort, uh, 54 54. 10,072. Yep. <laughs> what the hell? So this is like double the track. Of what effort. the hell is going yep. on? <laughs> yep. Uh, I don't even, I'm not gonna ask that one. You've crossed the streams, Ellis. <laughs> I, 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 at <laughs> some point, I have to cars. wonder why you would build number five in the first place. <laughs> uh, Robert Le Messina's power computation. Da 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 da. Twelve fifty four. Uh twenty two eighty six. I can tell you why, Ellis. I don't I Hawaii. I don't know if I want an answer. Alright, well, that was another point for eight. It's seven to three. Let's go Power L one. Okay. Three thousand five hundred fifty five. Forty eight sixty eight. If these two were fighting, we'd be seeing them land punches, and it would just be, it would just sound like, like, yeah. Just like a mini Roblox oof sound. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Rock'em Sock'em Robots. <laughs> yeah. We, we just put them both next to their uh, 5550. You see, you see like a normal versus, and it's like one of the fight scenes from Pacific Rim, and then down on the street there's two people playing Rock'em Sock'em Robots, and that's what this <laughs> is. Uh, anyway. <laughs> they should do a tug of war. Oh god. Uh the power empty. Six hundred fifty eight point six one. Five hundred sixty four point eight. What the hell? <laughs> okay. Alright, well there's a the point for Hawaii. Hawaii. What is their weight on driver? Let's do Uh, 38,000. Mine is 23,800. Yeah. TJ's weight on drivers is heavier than Milky's entire locomotive. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> I did engine weight already. I'm dumb. No, weight on drivers. That's what yeah, you just you said. said. weight on drivers, dude. Oh, I already said 23,800 for that. What? You did? Are you yeah. sure? Whatever, whatever. We're moving on. It, you won. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What is your firebox area? Firebox area, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Six, uh, yeah, 62. Oh, mine's 35. I don't know why I fought longer. Was yeah, you have an oil. Okay. Well, oil would impact the grades. But... Oh, would so, it? Great so that area. was a point for eight? Yeah. Yeah, isn't it? Is right. bigger or better? Yeah. That? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I just wasn't area. sure if I understood the interaction that just happened. Yeah, great area.
great area. Seven point six. Twelve point seven. Yep. Evaporative heating surface. Two eighty one. Six fifty nine. That's that's ridiculous. Uh, same. Uh, wait. Yeah, same uh, combined heating surface. Same as above. Yep, same. Yeah, neither <laughs> of you have superheaters. Nope. Uh, evaporative heating surface divided by cylinder mold. 221.2. Two three fifteen point three one. Three fifteen. And your cylinders are still that much bigger than Milky's. That's okay. Yeah. It's it's nine to nine. Quite it's tied up. Uh, tubes. Do you have tubes? I do have tubes. I have seventy four, and they're one point seven five diameter. Okay. My I have one thirty six, uh, and mine are also one point seven five. Okay. Well, there's the point for. TJ. Hell yeah. It's 10 to 9. One more point. Uh, tender, no. <laughs> tender, no. No. Not going to do that. Number, no. Uh, <laughs> actually, yeah, let's do. Uh, wait. I mean, we're going to. No, I'm not going to do that because we're the same. Thinking about G. <laughs> Uh, LSD Tamelio power computation. The weight computation, you mean? Yeah. Or, uh, math. Okay, we'll see about that. Yeah, go, go do math. I have no. I don't know what else to ask, honestly. So. Oh, the the numbers from last episode are still in here. All right, I got rid of them. What is it? Uh, weight on driver is divided by engine weight. Yeah. 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 That's just an L for me. Yeah, I don't think it's going to go well. Yeah, I mean, I think I was going to lose pretty much anything else I asked, so... I mean... I think there's something you could have won. Uh, I, I was thinking what, attractive effort, but I don't think... Tra my attractive effort's not great, so... You guys didn't do attractive effort? No. Oh, oh wait, not attractive effort, uh... Factor of adhesion. Oh. <laughs> That's always fun. I mean, mine's perfect. I have a four, actually. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Don't ask. I have a four. All right, who's who's on top of the point six four? Me. All right, Milky has point six four. TJ has point five seven. Milky wins ten points. Ten Wait, points. Why is mine points. green then? We have twenty. Uh, I don't know. That's just the way it decided to shake out. Green, green means good. Yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> green for green glory. For glory. Uh, there it is. <laughs> All right, it's green ten to ten. Uh, Milky, you won. What are you gonna do now? <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm going to Disney World. Yay! Someone finally <laughs> does it! <laughs> Actually, both of these locomotives could go to Disney World. <laughs> yeah, they could. Disney World has two foot? No, but they've regaged stuff before. I wouldn't want to see this thing regaged. Oh, no. That'd be cursed as hell. <laughs> That'd be mad funny. Actually, I mean, it is, it's already an outside frame. Or, you know, uh, yeah, they just have the spacers on it. Yeah. Well, I just put the wheels where the counterweights are. Yeah, it's good. Anyway. Good. We're not going to think about the logistics um, of this further. No. <laughs> so, there's 20 points on the board here. And I see the best option here is going to style points. Okay, style points. Uh, let's do... Shoot, I actually am not sure what all got uh, got called entirely. Let's see, I need the yeah, list. I need to look at the list. Um, well, I want to help out my boy, so uh, Valve Gear. <laughs> oh, TJ, we could hear Deep. you coughing that time. Deep oh, that's good. Wall shards. Nice. And yeah. Nokia Stevenson, so that's a point for eight. Uh, Dean and Tyler, do you guys have... I'm trying to think. What? 
Let me see a... I have a really funny idea. You should definitely ask Factor of Adhesion. No. Yeah. No. Look up his ID. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Mine's really high. Go, Milky. You go first. Mine isn't too bad. It's 6,749. 13,042. 13, Yikes. Okay. Uh, uh, Dean? Uh... Did y'all do boiler pressure? No. No, you didn't? No. Boiler pressure. 165. Oh. 180. Yeah, well, that that's, explains why a I, lot. that's why I didn't ask that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well, like... we're on to style points. Um, what do you guys want to... Uh, what do you guys uh, want for style points? Milky's a great. Yeah. Green. Milky is green. Yeah, yeah that's fair. He's I think I have, green. I think I have cab green, doors yeah. too, if I recall. Yeah. I think yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, eight, have, eight also has cab doors. They just look like windows. Okay. <laughs> They're just all uh, window. Eight had a diamond stack. Uh, are we yeah. using the photo of eight with the diamond stack? No, no. No, no let's not eight... do that. Let's not. That would be negative points. Doesn't he have, have an all with a cab? Or no? no. I don't think any of the two footers do. I know I don't because you don't need that in Hawaii. No. Yeah, you, definitely you definitely don't, don't need that in Hawaii. Uh, I do I get one for outside drive valve gear? That's outside cool. valve shots. gear or outside like, whatever, counterweights. counterweights or whatever, yeah. Outside frame or inside frame? Outside yeah. frame, yeah. Does that give me points? Uh, I mean, nah, uh, it's, a, it's a tough one. I like to give it because I feel like it's neat. Like, it's a style point for the sake of style, but it's not really mechanically better. It doesn't, also that link is, the link is broken for that photo. Oh. Well, there is like a little bit of benefit in having all of the lubricating surfaces out further you don't have a wheel between you and I guess components yeah I mean I'll, I'll give oh. it I don't think it's a I don't think it's a great style point but I'll give it oh I have a model yeah I do have a model is there a the model of model. Hawaii 5 uh TJ appears to have pulling pockets Hell yeah. TJ does that. Wait, where? What photo? And uh, the one with the the green diesel behind it. I don't see polling pockets. Uh, what are those? I don't see polling pockets. Polling pockets. I see a space where you could put a pole if you really wanted to die, but I'm I not... think it has polling pockets. <laughs> no, it does have polling pockets. Look at the... Hold on, I'm going to send another image from the back. Yeah. <laughs> well, it might have it from in the back, anyway. Yeah, but that's still a style point, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. I mean, it probably has more pockets than Hawaii 5. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, if you said... It's tough, but... I don't dislike the idea of this being all the cab. I mean, at least you can... At least you can do all the things in the engine without being exposed to the elements if you stick a board yeah, on that Yeah, that's hole. true. But, yeah, or like a curtain. Yeah, curtain or a window or something. Uh, the Fornies do have that as kind of an advantage, but... Either way, I'm going to give the point for the polling pockets. Uh, it's 15 to 12. Uh, hmm. Let's see what Lucky has. I, 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 I can think of something for uh, for five. That's kind of, you know. I, I can think of one thing in particular that's just kind of... What What is it, Tyler? I want to know. You can say it. The, the fact that it has effectively turned its tender into... Yeah, I was going to say the railing. Just. Yeah, the rideable tender. I think that's a style yeah. point. Yeah, that's pretty great. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, both have, they both have air brakes. Yep. Yep. Uh, you both have single stages. Yep. Electricity, oh. bell, oh, whistle. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming that 8 has a backing headlight. 
I just saw. Where's the picture of the back of it? No. no. Well, it I think it's supposed to. I think that's what that wire is. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Hold on. I I just saw some photos of. I can't find a photo of it with a headlight on the back. So. I see not. There's some things that maybe could have been. No, I I don't see one. <laughs> There's the photo of it with the diamond stack. Yeah. Okay. I'm giving the point to. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not seeing any... To the Hawaii 5-0, 14 to 15. Any other style points, anybody? I can't think of anything. Hmm. Well, five runs currently. <laughs> I was yeah. waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, five I was like, there's one money. I can think of, but I don't want to say it, because it oh, seems kind of obvious to me. Yeah. Actually, has eight's restoration started yet, or no. are they just waiting? Eight is just vibing. They just finished seven's no restoration clue. again. Yes, I again. forgot to put that in local service. Yes, that's true. We local do. Our have... inspection is almost done, or pretty much done. Oops, I just closed out the dock. The fur. All right. Do we have uh, any other style points? Otherwise, it's going to end right here. Nah. Yeah, I'm good with those. All right, it's fifteen to fifteen. Exactly how I envisioned it's it. A tie. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Perfect balance. You know what? I'm glad to say that I wasn't proven to be a moron. That's... Now it's still up in the air. Yeah, who knows? Now they do need <laughs> to could... have the pull off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to vote for eight, though, because, uh. Yeah. Because of the cult. Yeah. Well, uh, because of the cult, well. but also because it seems like an engine that, like, I understand why you would build this locomotive as opposed to five. I mean, five is nice because you can pretty much just like put it on. You can run it anywhere. Yeah, you just like put it on anything. You, you can just like put slap it on wooden logs. Yeah, yeah you, you can just like slap on... some can... stuff down and go get the sugar cane and then rip it up when it's done and build, bring yeah. the engine with you. Yeah, I mean that's fair, but just not too much sugar cane at once. It's only yeah. a little sugar cane. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, you can't haul too much. Yeah, exactly. You can, haul, you can like, probably haul like twice that with, with eight. And this is why falling. we need two foot. Mm -hmm. We're gonna buy the Hawaii railroad and uh, and convert it to two foot. Consider what? What's the following? Great. Uh, that's recent photo. Consider the yeah. following two foot gauge. Just exactly. in general. Hell yeah! This is a this is a great picture. We love to see BNSR, and also Monson, and also the WMF. Just two. -foot. Yeah. Also, just to uh, just because I'm a two foot nerd and I have to specify, three yeah. is not that much smaller than four. That track is lower than the rest. <laughs> That's fair. Also, it it <laughs> looks worse. It looks, boy, with the little headlight, it makes a difference. Oh yes, it has the WMF <laughs> or SRL six livery on it. That that's nice. Well, it goes three, four, six, seven, eight. We we just need five over there. It makes yeah. perfect sense. Regage five and give it to the WWF. Yep. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, do we have any other votes? Tyler, uh, I'm voting in my local election soon, and you should <laughs> too. Hey. True. But no. Vote vote as often as you're legally allowed to. Or try to vote as many no, times as you're not that. allowed to. <laughs> you won't get caught. That's probably about Biden. Do not commit voter fraud. Uh, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, okay. Oh. <laughs> one, of the, one of these... One, nah. <laughs> one of these things is not like the others. Yeah. <laughs> Stop the steal. My goal in life is to become a fake elector. All right, I'm gonna yeah. I'm going to just put it down as one nothing then. German Supreme. Uh, Sorry. Wait, no. Uh, you, did you not I vote for, for the the being a uh, Hawaii actually. Okay. The two foot. Two foot. Okay. Listen, listen. I want to tender surf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, listen, listen. They got to restore that consolidation thing they got. Yeah, it's really neat. It's got the cabbage stack. Oh, the yes. agent one. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. All right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about politics. 
Oh, my uh, favorite. Yes, Vermin yeah. Supreme. He, the right to a pony, I think that includes an Iron Horse. Um, actually, yeah, do we want to start off with the most political one? That'd probably be the Hudson Tunnels. Yeah. Yes. It's political? Well, ask Chris Christie. Oh! <laughs> Starts again. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so after a 13-year delay, uh, construction on the Hudson River uh, rail tunnels have started again. Yay. Or has started yeah. again. Been a while. Uh, the it's... Gateway Program, which will uh, address infrastructure needs on 10 miles of the Northeast Corridor, is a series of projects, including two new tunnel bores under the Hudson from New Jersey into Manhattan Penn. Uh, once the new tunnels are in service, the current 1910 bores would will be refurbished. I sure hope so. It's almost like uh, 10 years ago, like they got canned in 2010, and then two years later, we got the wake up call of like, we These probably should have collapsing. more tunnels. And then uh, another 10 years went by, and now we're finally they're finally building the damn things. Uh, yeah, apparently, well, bef apparently they're not building the tunnels yet. First, they have to raise, uh, raise a road. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, they have to raise a road, uh, move some util utilities, so that they can fit the tunnel boring equipment. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Ellis, but uh, Conti Civil uh, was awarded the contract, not. Uh, not your no, nope, not me. Not, nope. not your boys. No, you know what's the best part about this? Be quote: Before tunnel boring can begin, Tunnel Avenue in North Bergen, New Jersey, yeah. needs to be raised. It's spelled T O N N E L L E. No, yeah. we don't live. We don't live above a tunnel. We live above a tunnel. <laughs> tunnel <laughs> Avenue. Freaking French. The tunnel. Tunnel. Yeah. Tunnel. Yes. Well. You might be wondering, well, why hasn't this started 10 years ago? Well, you can thank our favorite sun-loving, bridge-closing Chris Christie. He closes bridges, uh, he closes tunnels. He's, uh, he you closes know, beaches. He closes canceled, beaches. Yeah. He's, uh, he suddenly canceled the project uh, in 2010 for fear of his state being responsible for cost overruns, according to Trains Magazine. Which, I mean, I, mean, I get the, the fear. However... Um, what state is going to be the most screwed if something happens to these tunnels? Yeah, I don't we think it's New Jersey. New Jersey. It's, it's, uh, no, I, I would argue it's definitely New Jersey. Really? At, yeah, at least New York has other things going on. New Jersey's that's whole true. thing is it's next to New York. Yeah, that's true. Um, and God new forbid. Tunnel, new tunnel will provide relief for the existing tubes that were flooded with salt water when Sandy swamped the the area in 2012 uh amtrak said that these tunnels are fucked and uh we need to replace them and nobody listened <laughs> uh, uh, apparently uh rush hour capacity of new york by rail would be reduced by 75 percent if one of the bores closed yeah because, uh, before the new ones are completed because uh like mathematically a single track rail line has exactly half of the capacity of a double track rail line, but that's not how that works out, really. Um, yeah. Well, uh, according to Chris Kaluri, the Gateway Commission chief executive says, "This is the start of the Hudson Tunnel project, and we are not waiting for 2024." Well, that's that's good. They. Yeah. Fine. Thank you. <laughs> they shouldn't have waited for 2014, but here we are. I just um, really hope that this can happen. I don't I care if it goes that. over budget. I don't care about any of that. What I care about okay. is if we have if we have an effing hurricane that closes the original tunnels, or God forbid, one of them just effing collapses. We have yeah, a like plan B. Yeah, I mean, like I, in my like my personal point of view is like, I really don't give a give a heck how much it costs. Like this is like one of the biggest choke points on the entire East Coast rail corridor. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's been so long since people have been saying it's in dire need of replacement that if we don't do it at this point, I mean, we're asking for something catastrophic to happen. Yeah. I I'm just going to remind everyone 
that these tunnels have been there. They're the tunnels. Yeah, they are the tunnels. They have been there <laughs> since 1910, and they were never flooded until 2012, but they have never, ever been closed for any length, any substantial length of time for serious, you know, R and R, uh, for serious yeah. maintenance. So that's a hundred and ten years. Well, at that time it was a hundred and twelve, or yeah, it's at that time it was hundred and two years. Sorry, now it is a hundred and thirteen. Oh god, hundred and thirteen years. Oh, must have god damn it! <laughs> <laughs> God Perfect. damn it. I can't get away um, from it. But, uh, yeah, the last thing about this is that there's a, f a firm date uh, that uh, first part of the the Tunnel Project, <laughs> not the Tunnel Project, <laughs> the Tunnel Project uh, is breaking ground next month uh, Octo in October. Uh, from Chris Kaluri again, this is the quote, uh, 113 years ago, a, ver a few very brave people built the current North River Tunnels, and it was the right decision for the 20th century. We are now about to embark on the next set of tunnels because it's the right decision for the 21st century. I'm just going to be honest, uh, just going to be just clarify a thing here. I feel like um, it was more than a few very brave people. I feel like it was a lot of people. That well, he's just talking about the people who, he's talking about the owner class, not oh, the yeah, people yeah, who died. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, so, like, one dude said, yeah, "I these... want some tunnels," and then a bunch of you know a bunch of stuff happened. Uh, there may have been people involved, maybe not. Um, uh, labor. Yeah. Anyway, um, needs it. But yeah, tunnels tunnels being built. Hopefully soon. Hopefully the entire northeast corridor won't collapse. Yeah, it would yeah. be it would be very nice if that didn't happen. Yeah, well, um, that would finally be... maybe give us like. Uh, hope for like a second main line like west of new york oh uh, i i might way? i might have i might have i might have something for that just saying yeah. there's a there's a speaking of second main line west of new york unfortunately it's not my discussion topic but it is the keystone corridor um and beyond they finally have approval to run a second pennsylvanian per day Let's go. Yeah, yeah. boy. Yeah. So now we should do what the PRR wanted to do all along and electrify it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all the way to Chicago, please. Agreement lays the groundwork for expanded passenger rail in western Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Uh, $200 million in infrastructure. Grants through the feds. NS is, quote, excited to build on our partnership, which somehow I doubt. Um, but yeah, so we should have a second uh, yeah, the agreement will increase from once to twice daily the number of trains operating on that line that also serves Lancaster, Lewistown, Huntington Altoona and Central Pennsylvania and of course Pittsburgh Pittsburgh. so yeah uh, that's good, that's a second western main line but let's go further west and uh, talk about the Tempe streetcar <sighs> yes my, my people. did you say Tampa? Yeah, Tampa. No, Tampa I'm streetcar. Kidding. They're they're the bright line. I love street running. So, as bright line is is doing their thing, we are we are doing <laughs> our thing here. So, as some of you may know from my like little segments, at times uh, there is a streetcar in Tempe. Yeah, a small little thing. It's been running now for a little over a year. Um, they opened in June of 22, which is right when I started living around here. Um, I found it quite convenient. And so too has the city, apparently. And the home of innovation, Arizona State University, which it borders up. The goal between the city of Tempe and Valley Metro, who Valley Metro is our, our regional operator, was 300,000 riders. In the first nice. year of operation, uh, we achieved eight hundred thousand. That's whoa! Like what? One point two three times? Uh, one point no, one point six six times. I thought you were saying three hundred thousand was what you got, and that sounded good to me. But eight hundred k is incredible. Yes, and this is on the system, right? 
where there are only typically four cars running at any given time, 15, 20 minute headways. <laughs> and it's not even really convenient to use it to get to like one side of campus to another for classes because it, it, it goes on the outside, at least for me, because all the engineering buildings are in like the middle. Um, but yeah, 800,000 in the first year. And it the thing that helps it a lot recently is it connects with the light rail system, uh, Valley Metro, which has been around since 2008. Um, there is a connection on the east side of the network on uh, it's Apache mm -hmm. and one that's on the west side that's near that's just off Mill Avenue and those two have become some of the most traffic stops on the Valley Metro light rail network in the past year um, at least the same counting measure so because of this um, the city of Tempe and Valley Metro are looking at going forward with the original plans for the extensions the big one that they're going with stv got the contract recently for planning out the eastern extension which would go along rio salada parkway to tempe marketplace one of the largest mall complexes in the area and then go down dobson road for a bit connect to other areas in mesa hold on i'm looking at the map right now um like the second one with all the colorful lines Yes. Right? Is that the one that we're talking about? Which which option is yes. getting picked? It, it is the one. It is the like dark red from okay. at there, and then they're also doing the looking at doing the orange. Oh wow, that'd be that that the street card getting like five times as long. That's pretty yes. serious. Yeah, they are they are very happy with the performance. Um, I, I'm not sure if. They're People looking at yeah. the yellow dash as well in the top right or not, but I know they, they want to do down Dobson, which is that orange section. Gotcha. Dobson the is big the one north well, south uh, road. Yes. Cool. The the big thing as well, Sloan Park right there, that is um, the Cubs spring training field. <laughs> oh, well that's neat. So... You want to talk about where all this connects up? Light rail, you can connect to Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. Um, it connects you into the... Down there, there's the two stops. Connects to the streetcar. Streetcar can take you all the way down there. Um, gotcha. So it just makes everything really convenient. This is on top of a, a lot of stuff that's just going down here in Tempe because we've kind of reached the point where the city cannot expand outward anymore because we have you know, Phoenix to our, our north and west, Chandler to the south, Mesa to the east. So everything's going up. and In price. Um, yes, in price and also, <laughs> you know, five, yes. six-story high-rises. We're getting Tempe Town Lake, like, the last 10 years that I've been here. It's like, boom. Mm -hmm. We were just getting skyscrapers. You cannot see half of Hayden Butte anymore. Um, oh no, five over once. We've heard about this. Yeah. Um, and to, to take a phrase, uh, Arizona State University, one of our big things is we're the home of innovation. We're like the eighth annual winner of the U.S. News Innovation Award for universities never heard of that so i'm gonna assume they made it up specifically for your college never Probably. heard of the word yeah, yeah we, we, we joke we kind of bribe but um the innovative solution to getting people around the city that's growing up um just take the thing from the 1890s that we knew worked do it again come on yeah innovation equals uh doing the original thing no they yes they clearly need like for gadget time. bonds all over yeah, they should make all of those, uh, all of the streetcars single, uh, single car and uh, oh, yes. autonomous. Yeah, they need to build a hyperloop and also robot cars all over uh, Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I see those Waymo like... autonomous like taxi driver vehicle things, and it's just oh. I saw one of those getting hit by a bus. <laughs> okay. I'm... Damn. 
like the bus yeah. like yeah. like merged into it. Oh my god! Get wrecked. And it I didn't guess. like it just like, kept going. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if it has like things crash sensors. I don't know. It. I don't know. It. I've also they're, seen. They're, uh, they're, uh, I've also seen videos of people putting cones onto the food delivery robots and they like freeze. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you put a like something on the uh, the head of a cat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, um yeah. so but on the other side of this transit here Tempe, very very good. City likes it. Um transit in Phoenix having a little bit of an issue. Oh, uh, what? So this is this is from AZ family. Um, high crime rate on the Phoenix area, light rail. It oh, reduced calls for better security. It, I was kind of surprised on the numbers here. January to July, Valley Metro reported 113 assaults. Wow. And 37 oh, oh, oh. assaults of security guards, which Damn. is up a fair bit from the last few years. And it, it seems, though, one of the big things is um, there is a staffing shortage on security guards. Oh, no. Like, missing 30% of staff oh, on yeah. that front. So that's that's being taken oh. care of, but this isn't really helping the public image. Um, the big point is coming up next year, and this is why it, I themed the segment Vote for Transit. The main driving force for the development of a light rail has been Proposition 401. 401 is it's like a half cent tax on a, it's a sales tax increase, I think. That goes into the light rail, it goes into um, any sort of transit bus, anything Valley Metro goes in, into. Mm -hmm. um, road reconstruction. Recently, there has been a push, and I believe it is approved for the bills next year, where Prop 401 cannot fund rail construction. Partially Ooh, due to they wanted to do a everybody. line. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. They, they wanted to do a line around the Capitol. And that, that apparently that pissed off enough politicians that they're like, okay, yeah. we're going to re-rate Prop 401. They, they wanted uh, to do a light rail near the Capitol, and the people who lived at the Capitol were like, Gross. No, no, not no. cars. Yeah. We don't <laughs> want the undesirables, aka yeah. our constituents, to be near us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. Math so, and that. Um it's... I wonder like uh like what com like compared to like other major cities with like rail or like subway networks, like what is the like how does it compare? Like is it like on average like worse than like most other cities or is it like it has it just like gone up relative to Phoenix? Hmm. Like that would that would be one thing that I would be curious about because like I feel like if you're like expanding a transit network, like the crime's gonna go up on said yeah. transit network. Like I'm obviously not like the staffing shortage, like you said, is probably a major component to it. Mm -hmm. Also, like you know the world being crazy, especially over the last like few years. But yeah, I'd be interested to see like how it compares to like. Because, I mean, I'm like, this is like an anecdote, but I've seen like, you know, a lot more videos of like crap happening on the MBTA and the MTA and all kinds of other subways, too. I'm j I'd just be curious to see what it's like in comparison to all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, I think I think a lot of it comes down to there is, I mean, we talk about worker shortage a lot and relating that to the security guard shortage and things like that. I mean, MBTA trains and stuff have fewer conductors than they have previously. Yep, yep. There just isn't, you know, it's not even about, like, forceful enforcement. It's just, like, having a dude standing there doing nothing is its own deterrent to crime. Yeah, um, yeah even just, yeah. like, a guy collecting, like, standing there, like, buying, like, selling tickets. Yeah, which is why we should have manned stations to come back to something that we yeah. talked about a couple episodes yeah. ago. <laughs> I mean, I saw a video today, like I said, this is super anecdotal, like even more so, but I saw a video on TikTok today of a guy uh, talking about how at the New Haven Union Station, uh, there were like a group, there was like a group of like teenagers, like talking about how they could steal his bag nice. from him. And like, he could just hear them? 
Yeah, he was like, yeah, these guys are just loudly talking about how they're going to try and steal my bag. Like, the, they're planning to steal my bag, like, in earshot of me before the train shows up. That's and he's wild. like, and this is... And he's like, and this is like two weeks after I already got like assaulted here. Well, you know, because you saw it on TikTok, it means that like, not only is yeah. that a thing that happened, but it's a thing that's happening everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a universal problem because I saw it on TikTok. Yeah. But no, I mean that that is kind of crazy. Unless it's yeah, like just staged. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it could like yeah, it could totally be made up. Could just be like you know. Uh, I mean, there was a conductor that got. A fractured jaw in a fight on NJT. That's um, true. Uh, that's the most like New Jersey thing, though. Like <laughs> the conductor being like, "You know what? I'm gonna fight you." That's that's fair. I mean, we have met Vert. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'll but, yeah, put that in. That's, that's, a, story that's an article that we have. This whole thing. It was like a couple of teenagers too. I think. Yeah, it's just interesting. I don't know. I. Because I know, like crime like there's like a whole like news narrative going around right now of like crime spike you know like everything like crime's going crazy every the crime's legal so i just wonder like sometimes whenever i see one of these articles part of me is like well is this like you know the crime spree narrative or is this like an actual like substantial problem that needs to be dealt with you know yeah always yeah. always think... look back to statistics but we do have the numbers on this one at least yeah or yeah. tiktok <laughs> or yeah you know what that's that's fair either either like statistics or TikTok. tiktok that's equivalent yeah and, and how california like decriminalized theft under 950 dollars that's the dumbest thing i've heard in my life crime is legal I, yeah I, crime <laughs> is legal in california with valley metro as well specifically besides the staffing shortage yeah. Uh, they recently did an ex extension to the northwest for the light rail. So the they're running passage. more services. They've got more cars in um, and into that area. Specifically, the goal of the project before the pandemic was to reach Metro Center Mall. Needless to say, that mall does not exist anymore. <laughs> so well, there is. There is yeah. some redevelopment of those neighborhoods, and I don't know if the whole... Oh, so they're being gentrified? Is that, is that the <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where it's the, the I've over one woods. of the biggest complaints with the light rail in recent years, ever since it's been open, really, is especially in the summer months. Phoenix, you know, we hit 115, 120 on the regular. Oh, kill me. And so the homeless populations, they, they haven't been building up shelters enough. Yeah. And so a lot of them will buy a ticket and just, you know, ride light rail there, back, there, back. I mean, that's oh, yeah, also that's what, what I, I do. do. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I would totally do. <laughs> there, yeah. are, there are two populations that this serves. The homeless and foamers. The homeless yeah. and, and people who, have, who don't have central air. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I wanted to make a comment about, like, homeless. I'm surprised that the, yeah, I spent all my money on trains. I couldn't afford it, central air. Uh, I'm surprised that does get this much of a showing because doing public transit in a place where it gets to be a zillion degrees every day uh, just seems like an uphill battle because why would I want to go outside for any length of time? Like, even to yeah. walk from here to the tram stop, especially with long headways, it's like, I'm going to stand there and melt for 15 minutes while I wait for this car to oh, show yeah. up. Street like car. Waiting, yeah. for the, waiting for the green line, but 10 times hotter. Yeah. Yeah. A thing down here is that AC isn't a luxury, it's life support, or something like that. Yeah, that that is twice as relevant in Phoenix. Yeah, I would hope so. It's That's waiting for the I... green line, but you're standing on the surface of the sun. Yeah, there's a heat lamp <laughs> on you. And it's not That's... because the MBTA is on fire. <laughs> it's just like that. Just naturally oh, look, that honey, way. the streetcar's on fire. <laughs> Again, like a bus. <laughs> hey, I've seen those one before. You have to, you have yeah. to make those uh, tram cars like higher heat tolerance for uh, Phoenix. I would the, hope well, so. they have like the the thing is is they're battery operated for a small portion of Mill Avenue because they physically could not put wires up there. Skill issue. And so you can just Why? hear the AC for all of the batteries to kick on. 
and it's oh. the most like <laughs> it's not obnoxious, but it's like a decently well, sized droning. It's like when oh it's god, I hope the conductor oh, remembered to plug speed. in the. I hope the <laughs> conductor remembered to plug it in last time it was at the depot. Yeah, well, it, it they have they have oh, the signs diver. It's like panograph up, panograph down, please. I'm just thinking like. One of these days, somebody's going to forget. You look over onto, like, the, the signboard that tells you where the next stop is, and it's just the empty, red, flashing battery icon. And it's like, oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 what you do is is you gun it, dart through the dark section, yeah. and then get back under yeah. the wire. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you just don't put any stops in the dark section, and you coast through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Easy. Just, just hope no one drives in front of you. Also, yep, just to... <laughs> No, go ahead. Except that's Mill Avenue, where, like, all of the bars are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just, you know, don't worry about the bumps. Well, you know, in, like, the 1900s, you just, like, got on. They didn't stop, so. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, a, it's yeah. like, a, like, a, like a cable car, like the good old, you yeah. know, you just hop on and grab the thing. Also, because stopping and starting a cable car is much more annoying than a normal road vehicle, but. Yeah. I also, I just want to fact check a thing from earlier, just to make it clear. The reason that there's a joke about uh, stealing is legal in California is because it's a misdemeanor, not a felony. If it's under $950. But, you know. That's, yeah. You know, fact check. Yeah. Um, still say, is. It's definitely not legal. Yeah, still is, in fact, illegal. But, uh, you know. <laughs> anyway. But it's less little possible. less illegal. Yeah. Um, so, discussion topic. <laughs> Where should we jump to next? Because Dean has two foot. Milky has something a which I assume is a kind of pun. Point. And then I have actual it, things to like it make is. us think. Okay. Let's do, I, uh, I, let's do, the, let's do the two fun and then the, the thinker. Okay. Okay. Well, the two um, fun starting with the two foot. Yes. I mean, we should. Well, we did that for verses, though. Yeah. Well, but it's also here in discussion topics. All right, fine. Make me talk about two foot. Why not? Well, Dean, what uh, what do you have for for two foot? Oh my leg. Also, why did you have to change First, the name? Uh, of this? Because it's it's a chorus in but it's at the Taliban. What is the? Oh, okay, chorus is somewhere else. Is it the building? Yeah, there. No, no, chorus was its own thing. At the Taliban. So I just pushed the boat like, there. Within like 20 miles of the Talifun. Well, yeah, they should obviously like save buddies. Juan then. Oh they God. are butt buddies. Can they can they build between them? Were they ever connected? Uh, no, uh, they were never connected. Were, no. Boring claim. Build it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> A tunnel. <laughs> yes. But they yeah. were building the channel uh, tunnel, but it's for two foot and also doesn't go under the channel. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, chorus seven, I think this is. Yeah, chorus uh, no, it, number it, seven. Chorus number ten is the new build. So why does it say several on the number plate? Uh, like because they're standing in front of seven before they pan the camera. Oh. Yeah, that's not I'm, it. I'm, that's a I'm different a very, locomotive. Yeah. I'm a very special boy. Okay. <laughs> but they yeah, built a new chooch. Chorus... Yes, it is currently the newest steam locomotive in on the planet. If I say in the planet. That's how, that's how well, it will be in the planet when it goes into the tunnel to get back to Chorus. Yeah, of sure, yeah. I'll, I'll but, get a photo up for the people. I did famously uh, 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 think that Chorus 10 was originally a part of the Chorus Railway in its heyday, but it's not. It's, it's a complete new build. It's mm. It's actually really good looking. It's really charming. Is Not it a, to be like a Ryan. Is it a reconstruction that... of the OG Chorus 10? E, it, okay. So Chorus 10 is <laughs> a new <laughs> build of... It's the same Falcon design as what numbers 1, 2, and 3 were. Okay. Of which those get combined essentially to take the best parts of those into number 3, which is now the Taliflin. Um, okay. So they just kind of went over to the Teleflin with a bunch of measuring tapes. And oh, okay. we're like, okay, we're copying your homework. Oh, all right. I've done that. I understand. <laughs> this is a 
It quite familiar. It is like a really handsome machine. It looks yeah. nice with an air pump. It's a cute. It's weird dude. that's yeah. got an air pump, but no air hoses. So, well, uh, there are uh, hoses on the, on the back. Okay, so yeah, if, oh, you're, weird. if you're shoving the other way, you're SOL. You gotta cut <laughs> yes. the air out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, no, it does have a hose. Um, on the front. Yeah, yeah you can you see it. Oh yeah, video. just yeah. barely. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, I, they're, they're it, I did small. not see it in the first photo. I guess it was tucked. Oh wait, I don't. Yeah. Yeah, okay, it is tucked in the first photo that I was looking at. Alice knows all about right. tucking. Yeah, well, I always have to, hey, man. you know, hide my <laughs> enormous penis. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Gonna tape that thing down. Yep. Or else it hit the floor. Dragon on the ground. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, rug burn. Anyway, uh, what else? Well, speaking of new build two foot <laughs> engines. Uh, uh, speaking of two foot, am I right? <laughs> uh, yo. Eleven is is coming along well. You know, looks <sighs> like I think last we talked about they had like turned the frame over, or was that a different machine? No, yeah, they no did. I think yeah, that they was I think that was the last update we gave. Yeah, the frame yeah. is temporarily together now. Yeah, temporary together. Uh, they have they have cast new uh, new um um uh, journal boxes, which look really good. Mm. Uh, like it, like the frames coming together pretty, pretty uh, decently. It's just how to kind of find a bunch of C clamps. <laughs> well, you know, or uh, clamps, you know. It worked for I the heard railroad. They're gonna run it like. I heard they're gonna run it like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I dare them to. The FRA said it's legal in California. You know that the T1 needs a frame. I see a frame <laughs> right here. T1 needs a bunch oh, wait, of C clamps. Oh wait, this is the update that we have. Do we not have the latest update? Is there a later one? Is there one? The, the new, they got a big new part. What's that? Oh, yeah, they, they got, got the, the, oh, the cylinder part. saddle? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I don't, we don't have a link for Hold that. On. Hold on, let me get one right now. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead and grab that, because that's, that's a cool, shiny new piece to show off. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure, because, you know, for those who know about the T1 Trust, they do have to build a frame in multiple pieces, because it can't be cast right. as one, because they just can't do that anymore. Um, There's the link. And... So I think they are going to cast it as two pieces and hold it together with C-clamps. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's, uh, the <laughs> that's, that's the plan. Yeah, so there's the... Um, can I make this more? Yeah, 21% complete, wow. Last yeah. I checked, they, 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 they were like 11. Well, this is 11. <laughs> it is 11. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we're at 80% of the fundraising goal for 2023, apparently. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Yeah, they have had no, uh, like, thankfully, they have had no issues with getting money. No issues with getting money, just... and as far as we can tell, no, like, oops moments. Yeah. Oops moments. Yeah. 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 Just like, oh, we ordered think... the wrong thing, or it doesn't fit, or, you know, whatever. I, would, I mean, also, like, their budget is so small. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like, $50,000 is their is their budget for 2023. I know, well, and that's a fifth of what they anticipate the cost of this locomotive to be. Yeah, yeah. Estimate completion date twenty thirty. Good lord. Twenty thirty. Oh for man, that's actually pretty. T one or close. For... that's like no, that's for eleven. T one. Oh, that's no, for the T one. T one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, twenty thirty for for a T one. That's like what well, six years the... away. Seven. What's the year for the build eleven? I don't like. I don't think it's listed. It's, I'm not sure if they have, have it planned. I think the answer is just like soon, when it's done. Yeah. I don't know what they would be done, but it'd be done on Sunday. Um, it'll be yeah. I just uh, every time I think of eleven now, I I didn't even know this person, but I think of who they mentioned, uh, G Wayne Lapel. Yeah. Um, I think I just think about how happy they would be with it. With this whole project, so um, it's really cool to see progress. Oh, if, if you if you um, uh, I think donate 110 bucks, you can get like a mini five inch Belkis plate. Yeah, oh, yeah, they have like model. <laughs> and if you want, 
if, if, if you want like like a full size replica, you can pay eleven hundred dollars. Nice. And if you pay enough, you just get a whole Very locomotive. Much. Yeah. yeah, that's actually or the goal. Vol- <laughs> or you if you volunteer, enough, you get the original. If you volunteer, you could eventually run the thing. Yeah, we'll be there on uh, the eighth of October. Oh, I'm so, ex- I'm so oh, excited. Yeah. But we'll be able to uh, give live progress updates because they will be building 11. Yes. Maybe uh, we will be yes. building 11. Well, no, we'd have to call ahead. Oh, okay. Never mind. We will uh, be watching um, them build 11. Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, we will be observing no, no, them build No, 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 no. You're calling ahead. <laughs> I, don't, I, have no, I have no machine shop skills. Yeah, no, I, I, I not... haven't done anything like that since I was in college. And and I am not, nobody here uh, does. Quick, call Weibold. I guess I've worked I'm on the not, porch. Yeah, get Casey up there, maybe. I don't know if Frank and Frank uh, construction counts as experience towards this. Yeah, I can I use like basic, basic home tools, but not uh, building locomotive technology. It's going to be hitting Just the... Like... He's like <laughs> banging on the side of the waiting. boiler with the back end of a hammer. Am I helping? The claw end? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm doing <laughs> something. <Uh-oh. laughs> no, wait, no, wait. And then I get this to die in a enough. boiler explosion. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Anyway... Uh. Uh, just like, just like the um, the um, a house mate theme just blares in the background <laughs> as we all tool around on eleven. No, the Home Depot song. Um, <laughs> that too. The orchestral version of the Home Depot song. You know, actually, uh, yeah. the thing I'm kind of curious about next time we get to the WWF is if they have fixed that turntable at all. Careful, it's really peppery. Probably not. I, hope, I think they might have. I hope it's a little better. Um, I think. Um, I mean, I live vicariously through their Facebook posts <laughs> when I'm not up there. So, um, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it might be a little easier now. Well, we may find a out. A little. But they also said in a post that you can help. <laughs> they're like enlisting the people who buy tickets. They're like, you can even help turn the locomotive at Trout Brook. Please. It says please in parentheses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so funny because like when I – when uh, when I was there last time, they asked me to help. And I was like, oh, I'm so cool. Yeah, and then it was and you that, and 17 <laughs> other people. <laughs> yeah, that was just like, uh, like, please help us. Like, it's we need your help. To turn it like five degrees. Anyway, Milky, <laughs> exactly. that new turntable at ORF, that isn't an Armstrong turntable, is it? They've yeah. got power on that thing, right? They they will have power. I think they're uh, rebuilding they that portion of it. Well, the turntable uh, does spin... It's just, I think they are still working on some of the motors, if I recall. You need to be forklift certified to move this thing. <laughs> yeah. So I could move this if I wanted to. Um, but it's cool that, you know, they're still working on it. And they're to the point now where they can spring stuff on it right before 49. Oh, yeah. They put 4449 on the turntable just for kicks. Hold on. Can we go back a second, Milky? You're forklift certified? Yes. Why did I not know this? Why did nobody know this? I there are so many memes that I could have done. I <laughs> That's how he gets all the girls now. Hold on, I understand. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. I need to fix something. Hold on. Just I'm just gonna do this. You guys keep talking. I just need to change nickname. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no yeah, yeah, yeah. parentheses forklift certified. Yes. Uh, Just give him a oh, it's too long. <laughs> no, uh, it's one yeah. character too long. Hold on, I'll delete the the space. Yeah, we should have a role in the Discord for everybody who's folk, uh, forklift certified. <laughs> we should have done yeah. that on the yeah. effing community server. That would have been hilarious. Oh yes. Uh, Next time, baby. Yeah, so it's all good at Orf. Uh, they, yeah, they just have some. Uh, some work to do on the motor and then to be way to go. That's exciting. It's nice to have and a turntable. Another thing that you also need to be circuit for circuit certified in art four is putting the air pump back on the SPNS seven hundred. <laughs> which they did a couple about a month ago. So when are they gonna okay. run it on the main line? Uh what when Orf Two mean? opens, yeah. When Orf Two <laughs> opens, run it to Orf Two. Yeah, 
We're yeah, going to restore in 1 into ORF 2. Which is, again, <laughs> next door. On 197? It'll be next door. It'll be across the street. It'll run a, almost as far as 2926 runs. It'll be a legally <laughs> permissible distance away. No <laughs> update on 197 as a reason. I think you know, just... The update on 197 is that it's no longer allowed within 500 feet of an elementary <laughs> school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Orf has a restraining order on Orf 2 and its members. <laughs> that's why I haven't been able to work on this stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's why I haven't been talking to you, Milky. But I really, I think it's just because they don't have enough security guards. I, I don't blame the people at all. Yeah, it's a sword, dude. Yeah. Um, it, sign of the time. But anyway, that's all I got. I was trying to find something related to to the twenty nine twenty six. What have, what have they do <laughs> lately? Um, they they're doing the New well, Mexico hurry. Railroad days. We just had like a couple YouTube videos from them or a YouTube uh, post. Is that the one that went to the brewery? Yes. Yes. That's the That's big cool. the big engine that goes a small distance. It's still going farther than sixty thousand. So I don't suppose yeah, it's Fitch, that bad. Uh, Fitch, yeah. Fitchburg's, Fitchburg's oh, wow. got to get a steam locomotive for the breweries. Gonna be Daniel Mason. There's God, one. Uh, there's one brewery that's in a formerly rail-served industry building. You are allowed to. You are allowed to drive this locomotive drunk. <laughs> well, the the brewery is River Stick, so we could really make like a satanic locomotive. Oh no! I see no reason why the Daniel Mason does not apply here. It's true. That's true. Yeah, the most cursed locomotive to a, a pagan brewery. Yep. Anyway. Um... So let's talk about some like more hardcore stuff. Let's let's actually talk about like the rarid industry instead of memeing. Um, do you guys remember? Actually, no. Well, I'll I'll do reciprocal switching second because I feel like that's the thing we can talk about more. The first is just sort of a this is what's going on with intermodal service. Cursory look at intermodal service right now. CPKC. They're, they're having their little fight. Yeah, CPKC. For those who don't know. Finally, ha they have an east-west transcon and a north-south transcon, because that's how CP was, and that's how KCS is. It looks like a yeah. big T-shape. It's honestly a really meta-looking railroad, if you know Merger Mania. Um, yes. And, damn, we almost had Kavan on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> for somebody who knows Merger Mania meta. Uh, now, the other railroads are beginning to feel the heat. The other class ones, because CPKC is doing a really good job at that cross-country intermodal service. Or at least, they look like they are, and they're scaring the pants off of CN and NS, that are now making a domestic, a like, integrated... Yeah, they have a pact. So you can go from Kansas City and Atlanta, to Montreal on one end, and Vancouver on the other end. They basically have a transcon north-south, east-west. Um, I mean, CN the runs all the way to New Orleans... But that's not part of this deal. No, um, it's... These two carriers will utilize new intermodal steel wheel interchanges in Detroit and Chicago to seamlessly operate like a single line intermodal product. I don't know what that means, as a, but as I assume they're talking wheel. about a rail yard. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This uh, they need to find fancy terms for them to make people excited. Um, isn't it so innovative you know fancy yeah. steel wheel interchange mm -hmm. so yeah so they're integrated rail interchanges also provide customers with the opportunity to optimize their cargo loaded weights okay somebody that knows more about the road industry than me is going to have to explain that to me at some future point because I don't know what that's supposed to be uh, I, I, I feel like this is fancy legally. I think that I think that they're just trying to say, like, like, just, yeah, that's just what they're trying to say. Hey, ship with us. It's just advertising. Yes. I mean, yes. It's just that they, they, there's got to be something there, right? I mean, optimizing loaded weights, like, I don't know how that works, but there's got to be something there. Um, meanwhile, Union Pacific is like, F you all, I'll do it myself, and they have... We have four separate articles that basically all say the same thing, which can be said in a single sentence. Union Pacific has removed a full day of transit time for customers shipping on our Mexico intermodal products, creating unmatched wow. intermodal services that connect 
the U.S., Mexico, and Canada. <laughs> so um, they made their intermodal <sighs> service faster because CPKC is probably flexing on them. Um, <laughs> so CNNS and UP are both trying to get on the ball with intermodal service. And I hope they can manage that because, uh, well, because railroads probably should get on the ball with shipping cargo places as compared to the last few years where they absolutely have not been doing that. You pee in the corner with that horrible report from the uh, FRA. FRA. Which one? The inspection report? Yeah, the inspection report. Yeah, uh, so I had an article about that, but I didn't find a good way to loop it in. Um, yeah, the FRA, quote, found equipment in poor condition, which is quite possibly the understatement of the year, although I do not know. Um, Probably the century, like, especially with Bailey Yard going kaboom. Well, you know, that might have something to do with it. Um, UP in August, they furloughed 100 mechanical employees-ish and uh, about 50 car men. Um, due to lower freight volumes and the storage of locomotives, which I assume is completely their fault, because that's just the way things go. Uh, yeah. Just railroading in a nutshell. And, quote, compliance of There's the rolling business. stock on the UP network is poor, and UP was unwilling or unable to take steps to improve the condition of their equipment. Basically, you are bad and you should feel bad, and you're not getting better. And, like, we can yeah. see that you're not getting better. Um, a car defect ratio of 22%. Ooh. That's one in five. Etching Ooh. on one in four. That's oh. that ain't good. That's not, no. that's not good. The Made upper, in a... Hold on. You want something worse? Uh... Almost that pin centrals. The FRA like said it found defects on nearly seventy three percent of the UP locomotives it inspected. <laughs> uh, wait, so it's not inspecting all of their locomotives? Well, I feel like that would be a lot of work. So Well I mean are you gonna <laughs> round up the several thousand locomotives? When the FRA comes to inspect stuff, they do spot checks. The Yeah, the, true. The thing is inspecting every single one of your locomotives if you wanted an oversight agency to do it you'd have to give them an, a lot of money uh, yeah. and a lot of people so that's usually left up to the railroads for the FRA to come in and say like hey just making sure you're doing the right thing and then they come in and do these spot checks and apparently the spot checks were really really bad um how fucked up is fucked up yes that's fucked up um a former FRA official said the agency appeared to be sending a message by conducting the intensive inspections in a departure yard, quote, rather than elsewhere on the property, and there are a lot of trains elsewhere in North Platte. Uh, basically, they are in. They went out there, and with their, you know, limited resources, they went to the departure yard because these are the cars and locomotives that are about to go out of the line. As in, there's I can no, imagine why they do that. Yeah, there's no hiding. Anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's CN and, uh, sorry, that's UP getting in trouble. I hope they get in proper trouble, but at least they speed their intermodal up by a day. Now, back when we first talked about reciprocal switching, I sort of thought it was a dumb buzzword. Uh, I I joked about it a lot. The more that we've talked about it. And the more that, like, real stuff has come out about it, the more that I've been interested. Uh, because before it was just kind of a, you know, oh, reciprocal switching. What does that mean? Well, now we know what it means. Um, Clock switching. Earlier this, no. Earlier this month, the board unveiled the long-awaited rule, which for the first time proposes service standards for railroads. If a railroad fails to meet any one of three standards for 12 straight weeks, a customer located within a terminal area can seek a reciprocal switch agreement that will provide access to a nearby rival railroad for two to four years. Um, so if you are a customer on UP, and UP has managed to uh, break down every single one of its locomotives that tried to reach you and they couldn't switch you out for 12 straight weeks, um, then you can say, like, hey, BNSF, you're within 
I believe the cutoff is a hundred miles or something like that. Uh, Wait a minute. Uh, there could be funny names for this. You know, you have a connection with UP X number of miles away. That's close enough. You can come and switch us instead. So, yeah, it'll basically wouldn't that go on? BRB, wouldn't, wouldn't, that pose, wouldn't that pose problems with um rights? Well, it would essentially be forced trackage rights because UP is in this example, UP is failing to serve this customer that is on their network, uh, that's isolated on their network, so they have to bring in another railroad from elsewhere to come and do it. Um, to uh, avoid a potential out. reciprocal switching request, Class 1 railroads must meet or exceed standards for service reliability, service consistency, and local service. So, a part of the podcast, and then reliability and consistency. Um, Railroad must deliver a shipment within 24 hours of its original estimated time, at least 60% of the time, which is kind of low bar. Um, consistency, that's for reliability. Consistency is um, if the average transit time is increased by a certain percentage compared to the average transit time for the previous 12-week period, or sorry, same 12-week period the previous year. So basically... If they are not getting it on time based on what they say, also if they're not getting it on time based on what they've previously been able to do. Um, and the third one is how well the railroad spots and pulls load in empty cars within a 12 hour service window. If the local spot pull rate falls below 80% for 12 straight weeks, the customer could seek a reciprocal arrangement. So it's saying, again, from the top, it's within 60% on time, within 25% of the window of time, and within the correct 12-hour window. Uh, as long as they meet those expectations, the railroad will be completely allowed to continue serving its customer. If they fail to meet those, then the customer can reach out to another railroad and the service transportation board and say, we really could use another option here. Hmm. I, there's, there's this jump of wheels spinning in my head. Yeah. I, huh. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like it. I mean, like... I, I like it. Because I think I in a way, it. even if I, it doesn't... Yeah. Even if it doesn't actually result in a, another railroad coming in and operating... Even if it's just like, oh, well, we're going to bring another railroad in, and then the class one's like, okay, 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 we'll, we'll improve. Or yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I think even it's just like a fear tactic, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It I, provides service standards, and then it provides like a, this is what happens if you don't meet them, which is continuously the problem, because, like, Milky, I want you to say your piece, but like with Amtrak, it's like, you have to prioritize Amtrak or else, and then they don't do it. And there is no or else. It's just, you gotta do it. And, you know, there's there's no... When there's no penalty, like real penalty, there's there's no incentive. Milky, go ahead. I'm just saying this would be good for, like, the brand sign customer that gets shafted by the PSR era. Yeah. Yeah. And that's... Um, the reciprocal switching rule also provides a financial incentive for railroads to meet the minimum service standard standards. Um, and it, quote, if th the threat of losing long-haul revenue to a competitor doesn't motivate railroads, nothing will. So, yeah. I think mean, that's pretty true. And that's, that's the thing. It's like, finally... And I hate to compare it to, to a game, right? But it's like developing a, a system for a game. It's like, these are the things that you came here to do. Like, yes, you can just decide to not do them, but finally there is a system in place that penalizes you for not playing the game properly. You know, there's a there's a customer on your... You're a railroad. You're there to move cargo. You're there to, you know, move things from point A to point B. If you don't want to play ball with that, if you just want to sit back and, you know, sort of disassemble your railroad to collect money or your short-term profits, PSR, whatever the hell you want to call it. Now, you don't get a perfect 
unimpeachable zone of control over the people that connect to your rails. Now they have options and they can say, actually, I think I'm going to go with somebody else because you're not doing well enough. And that's, I mean, again, I joked on it when, we, when it first came around, when it was just a buzzword, but we finally have numbers for it. And I'm, it's just like a step, you know? It's nice to see a real step as opposed to it just being, we have this thing called reciprocal switching that we think is a cool idea. It, this is quite literally the Pavlovian teaching of class one word executives. I mean, I sure hope so. That'd be, that'd be great. Um, is, a, is a bell ringing? Our director of Pavlovian research, Isabel Ringing. Um, yes. But that's our stuff for today. Like I mentioned earlier, we have a few things in the works. Uh, I'm just going to do the maintenance away, get that out of the way quick. We have a few things in the works. There's a screenshot competition, which will be judged on Wednesday. There is a Locodome bracket coming up after that. There are trading cards for sale on theironhorseman.com. And uh, other than that, we are not necessarily looking forward next to what will be the next uh, set of cards, but we're, you know, there are some ideas out there. There are some healers out there. So, latest train in Amtrak. Oh, also, we will be at the New England Wireless Steam Museum Steam Up on October 7th, and then at the WNF on October 8th, as previously mentioned. We're going to be working our butts off. Yep. Well, only at the second one, not so much at the first one. We're also probably going to be at the Big E. Well, I say probably, I know I will be. Um, all are welcome. You can come find me. I'll trade cards with you. I managed to find him every year, and he uh, only ran away uh, once. Yeah, well, TJ, I rope into showing up. You know, I guilt trip him. I, I do like the big, the sad eyes when he's like, I don't know. I don't know if I want yeah, to go, and I, I go... It's really... It, the guilt trip is really, there's going to be a steamed up two-foot engine, and I say, <laughs> okay. That's Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> I mean, last time I got to blow the whistle, so... And then we Ooh. and then we sit behind the PN booth for a couple hours, and you're like, oh, man, full, bamboozled again. Yep. When someone, as soon as someone asks me a question about the PN... Yeah. You go, well, actually... I'm like, yeah! I haven't been a member for several years. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just here. I'm friends with the president. Yeah. Pretty sure the I first the time I talked to JB in like from the period when when I was a member to when I started like doing stuff with them sort of, you know, like the biggie every year. Yep. Again, JB the first thing he said to me was, "Don't know, don't you owe us some money?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "I don't know." Well, let me no. check with the treasurer. Uh, I might I might have a don't go up the entire chain of command to the president. You don't have to go. I'm I'm sitting right here. Yeah. <laughs> all, go all, all the right. way up the one oh, step. Ah, oh, shit. I said I shouldn't have said anything. Uh, now, yeah. the, now the president's going to come after me. Yeah, we're going to... I'm going to be like, all right, get in the car. We'll go to the Big E. We get halfway yeah, down exactly. Route 222, like the middle of nowhere, and I pull over. You're like, what's yeah. going on? Oh, you know, I've, I've never stopped at the scenic overlook before. <laughs> Get out of the car. Get out of the car. <laughs> yeah. Go look at the fall foliage, TJ. Yeah. What are the? What's that concrete for? Uh, you'll find out. <laughs> anyway, find all right. Out. Latest train at Amtrak. This town's down there, you know. Ooh, there's two that are really close. What is this one? Oh no, that's that's just a. Never mind. I have to say the Texas Eagle. The Texas Eagle? Okay. Uh, northbound or southbound? South. South? Okay. Um, anybody else? Westbound Lakeshore Limited. Westbound Lakeshore. Okay, let's see. West yeah, there, there's one. There it is. Found it. Eastbound California Zephyr. Eastbound Zephyr. Okay. Give me... Is there a westbound sunset? Westbound nope. sunset. There is a westbound sunset. Yes, there is. Okay. All that's right. That's it. We'll start with that. It is at Benson, Arizona, right now. It's on time. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Um. How? 
Uh, come, come through Detour to Phoenix, please. The southbound uh, Texas Eagle is an hour and 18 minutes late at San Marcos, Texas. The eastbound California Zephyr, of which there are two, they are both about the same. One is an hour and four minutes late. The other one's an hour and 31 minutes late. None of those are the latest train on Amtrak. The Lakeshore Limited is eight minutes late at Utica. Um, steamed hands. Oh, we love Utica. Yep. And the latest train on Amtrak, let's see. Oh, this one actually just made up a bunch of time. The city of New Orleans was the latest train, or close to it. And then it just pulled up to uh, Jackson, Mississippi. And it gained a bunch of time back. It's now two hours and 55 minutes late. The latest train on Amtrak is, is the three hour and 53 minute northbound Texas Eagle. No! <laughs> and, uh, I should have chosen the winners. I should have chosen the north. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's a service disruption on the Pacific Surfliner, but what else is new? Uh, the Coast Starlight's an hour and a half late. The other Coast Starlight's 40 minutes late. And honestly, everything else is pretty much on time. There's oh a God, the via corridor. There's a Carolinian. I, I wasn't looking at that. There's a Carolinian that's an hour and a half. A uh, Northeast Regional that's an hour. Other than that, you know, everything's pretty, pretty sedate, pretty normal. A two-hour late Vermonter. It's currently at Randolph, Vermont. At Tyler. Um, okay. And the Canadians three hours late. Classic. Anyway, thanks for watching this episode of the podcast. Uh, I need to figure out what I'm putting as my as my thing. Was this a short episode or a long episode? This is we're at 205. We're pretty much exactly on time. 205. I feel like this was a quick oh, episode. Wow. We like well, not quick in the time sense, but quickly like we kept it moving. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think it worked out pretty well. All right, um, so now we have the uh, conversation for another hour. Yeah, let's. Uh, no, this is this is the glory. Just finished dinner. I want to go eat it. TJ, that get on the funny. phone with your mother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that happened right before the podcast. Um, she's uh, she's my favorite side character on this podcast. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. I'm, if, because she's got it going on. I don't even think she knows it exists. That'd be, that actually, yeah, that makes sense. Um, that, yeah. that wouldn't make sense. Oh, you know what? I'm going to throw in a, uh, I don't really have a, a thing. So I'm just gonna. Throw oh, I got this a. Uh, down. I got a termination. Oh no. What could it be? It's my. It's my photo in the podcast chat. Okay. <laughs> Geiger ah. is being gentrified. Nice. We got a, We got street food. I hope. Oh. I hope this works. I'll try to put this in. Um. All right. Dean, so happy to you're see up that. first. Uh. Th- this is just a um a list of things to bring when I'm when I'm when I'm uh well friend in us. Uh oh, what is this? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh yeah. A gas mask. <laughs> yeah, and also UP as well, apparently. Um yeah. you know, I really I, maybe I don't wanna know. I wonder how those uh defect numbers compare to the other class ones. Yeah. Anyway, uh Milky. Mine is Sacramento Northern's Car Ferry Ramon. Because it's just on my thing. mind. <laughs> is it, it could be one of I the Ramones if there was more than one. <laughs> the fucking wheel. Oh my god, the wheel is enormous! <laughs> Where? In the, on it, the, the bridge oh. on top. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> it, looks like, so it looks like it should clip through the floor. Uh, all right tyler recent expedition to the um wrecks of midway Mm -hmm. so first close footage of akagi more footage of kaga and more footage of yorktown Uh, nice check it out the battle of yorktown not that one damn but it has Lafayette. All right, TJ, I put yours in. Geiger's being gentrified. Um, I guess I'll show that in case it doesn't work on stream or, you know, in the thing. I'll just put that up. And uh, I had just a little piece of news from the New England Steam Corps where they got um, they got some springs. They got some, some uh, springs for the lead truck. 
And of course, ML and M is... Yes, is they got the springs from main locomotive and machine. <laughs> or rather, they're going to main locomotive and machine. And the top comment wait, wait, is wait. that this is wicked awesome. Nice. So, if if it's being restored at main loco machine, are they going to pull it out of the shop on a two-foot... I love this timeline. I mean, it is probably getting... it. It is possible that it's getting to main locomotive machine via a two-foot gauge flat car, or at least the leading truck may return via a two-foot gauge flat car. Uh, what? I love this timeline. Yeah. What? Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this episode of the Terminus Podcast. We're not going to fill TJ in on what we just discussed. I don't know what oh, happened. I, oh, I heard two-foot flat car and that was it. Oh, I can't click on the link myself. Oh, bye, guys. Yeah. See ya. Uh, uh, thanks, of course, to everyone who watched this. Uh, thanks to everyone who's on this. Thanks to Steve and Wes, uh, whom I need to uh, create another document for to bombard them with uh, fixes and things. And uh, thanks to... Oh, this isn't Virtual Rail Fan, but whoever runs this camera for not sending us a DCMA... Shout out to them. Yeah. Shout out to <laughs> Achilles yeah. for running this cam. Yeah, that's it's yeah, literally okay. him. Um, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next week in case of and, well, we'll see you next fortnight in case the emergency hit the gritty. I love Fortnite. Bye. 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 Bye.